Hey everyone, my name is Prabhanjan. I'm a senior curriculum instructor here at Masai. I teach backend uh, at Masai, which involves uh, languages like Node.js and databases like MongoDB and so on. And today we are going to learn about how you can become a full stack developer by just following a roadmap. Okay, so what is a full stack developer? A full stack developer is nothing but who can create the entire front end and back end of a web application all by yourself. A front end is nothing but whatever you see on your page and a back end is nothing but that supported that, that that supports the front end that gives the data to the front end that can store the data and so on so what is the first step that you need to do to become a full stack developer you need a language a programming language is all you need to master and to become a full stack developer now which programming language to take that's totally up to you there are lots of lots of programming languages out there feel free to pick any but what you need for a front end is very, very specific. Not all programming languages support front end no, and front end. Uh, you, you cannot create like front end in every single programming language out there, right? So what you need is first thing to create the layout, the building blocks of front end is an HTML program. It's not technically a programming language, but with HTML, you can create the building blocks, the structure that you see on your UI that is created by HTML, like a button, an image or a form or anything that you like. Okay, the way that you can style this with the second step for a front end is the CSS. What's a CSS? It stands for cascading style sheets, but overall it means how you can theme your the elements that you are seeing. So you'll be creating a button with HTML, right? But to style it, to make it red, to make it larger, to change its font, you're gonna need a, 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 a language called as CSS. With that, you can style your page however you want. You can uh, make it look like different on different devices and so many things with it. Okay, so HTML and CSS can only make your site look good. They don't make the website interactive, right? You need on that button click, you have created a button, it looks good. On that button click, you want to do something. And for that, you're gonna need a programming language called as JavaScript. Now you must have heard about JavaScript, JavaScript is everywhere, right? So it's not like, no matter which programming language you pick for backend, you're gonna need to learn JavaScript for front end because that's the only programming language that can actually work on a button click that can actually do something that can tell the browsers to interact what the button does. So you're going to need to learn the JavaScript. JavaScript is very, very simple. You can get started with it and, you know, completely master JavaScript in just two to three weeks. Uh, but that's all for that's all you need for a front end. Okay, but that's not it, right? So you have a front end. Uh, but like I said, there, there is another 50% part involved which is the backend itself. Now backend is really huge. Like a front end, uh, like what you see on the front end was very, very limited with HTML, CSS and JS. Backend is not like that. Backend has a lot of, lot of moving parts involved. Uh, the most common thing that you need to learn after the, you have learned front end is something called as APIs. Now the word is big, but the meaning is very simple. API stands for application programming interface. But all that means is how your front end is communicating with your backend. Okay, so you'll have to look into something called as RESTful way. It's basically a way that a backend and frontend will communicate with each other. Okay, now with whichever programming language you learn, it could be JavaScript, it could be Python, it could be C, C++, Java, it doesn't matter. Every single language, you'll have to create these APIs. Okay, and you, there are different different frameworks involved. There are lots of moving parts involved, which we, which we can't cover in just small, uh, in, in a small introduction video. Once you learn these APIs, You'll be, create, you'll be able to create the backends, complete backends that are actually able to connect with the front end. Okay, and next, the next part after that, once you have created the APIs, is uh, another big giant part uh, that is involved, it's called as a database. Okay, what you know what's a data is, you know what's a database is. It's basically a, a place where the data is stored. Right. So uh, once uh, there are also lots of lots of databases available, there is MongoDB, there is Postgres, you must have heard about maybe MySQL. So these are the databases which actually hold the data that a user is saving. Right. So the flow works, the way that this flow works is very, very easy. You have the front end user generates the data on the front end. It sends the data to the second part, which is the back end, which you created the APIs with. And the what back end does is it takes that data and it's stored into the databases. Now, this is just a small gist of it. Obviously, there are lots of still more parts involved, but with by just following this a simple path, you should be able to become a really good full stack developer in a very short amount of time. Okay, that's all for this uh, introductory series. I'll see you guys later.